All right, joining me now to explore this more is Greg Roman. Greg is the director of the Middle East Forum and Spencer Critchley. Spencer is a democratic strategist, managing partner of Boots Road Group Communications. And Spencer is also a former communications advisor to the Obama campaign in 2008 and 2012. And you can also catch him as the host of Dastardly Cleverness in the service of Good Podcast. All right, gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, Greg, let's start with you. Do you think that former Obama officials are undermining U.S. foreign policy and national security with this advice that they're reportedly giving to Tehran? I remember former House Minority Leader and now Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi complaining about meetings that were taking place between Mike Flynn, the former Trump administration national security advisor, and calling for him to be prosecuted under the Logan Act for speaking with Russian officials before the inauguration of Donald Trump at the beginning of 2017. Now, I don't approve of what Mike Flynn did, but even more so, I don't approve of former Obama administration officials trying to undermine American foreign policy goals. Just like Democrats have complained about Republicans doing this, we now see a Republican administration being undermined by Democrats. And at the same time, both parties cannot interfere with American foreign policy, not just according to federal law, but according to what's necessary for American national security goals. If the Iranians get mixed messages from a former Secretary of State, members of Congress, former national security officials of the immediate precedent previous administration, then what this will do is mix the messages that are coming out of Washington, D.C. and the White House. If there are two American foreign policies, the risk that it poses to American foreign policy without having all of that in the unitary nature of the executive branch could make us less safe and could lead us closer to conflict with Iran rather than having a policy which brings them back to the negotiating table and at the same time mitigates any potential dangers according to their nuclear project, a project that was not saved by the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action but actually was just delayed to 10 years from the time of its signing. Right. Look, uh, Spencer, the Trump administration has made it clear it's trying to use sanctions to force Tehran back to the table to renegotiate the deal and get a deal that does prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons, not just delay it, and does stop its sponsor of terrorist proxies. So this advice reportedly given by former Obama officials to just hang tight and try to wait out Trump, it undermines the Trump administration's initiatives and entire strategy. Do you, as a Democrat, support that? I want to say, uh, first of all, just quickly that uh, what the Trump administration is trying to do is get back to where we were before they dismantled the Iranian That is deal. not accurate. What the Trump administration, weaker, Spencer, what the Trump weaker, administration um, is trying to position. do, Spencer, what the Trump administration is trying to do is not get back to where we were. They're trying to come up with a deal that they say will prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon and to eliminate many of the flaws in the deal, like uh, the sunset clause uh, and, and also Kirby Iran's uh, behavior in the region and stop it for sponsoring ter terrorist proxy. So they're not trying to get sure. back to where we were. Do you support this? No, well, no, they need no. to get back to where we were in order to make any, any, any progress because they've put us way behind where we were. But I know that what you want to talk about is whether people who are not part of the administration should be negotiating on behalf of the administration. And I agree with Greg's analysis. That shouldn't happen whether it's Republicans doing it or whether it's Democrats doing it. It's clear that that's what Michael Flynn was doing, and uh, I appreciate that Greg recognizes there was a big problem with that. He was explicitly promising to the Russians that they could ignore the Obama administration's sanctions and just wait for the Trump administration, and you absolutely should not do that. Uh, and of course, the Trump administration has been notoriously lenient on Russia ever since. Um, now, in terms of whether Obama figures about, or former Obama about, administration figures are doing it. I don't know about that statement, Spencer, but uh, we don't know that the Trump administration having well, according to the president, has, has, according been, to the president, has been the, lenient. He wants better relations, but he hasn't been lenient on Russia, not if you look at uh, the sanctions imposed According to the president, the, the attack by... According to but the let's, president, let's, the attack Spencer, by Russia let's stick on the United to this, Let's stick to this Iran deal, because you've got... Yeah. Look, I, I understand that Democrats and Republicans can disagree on domestic issues. That's fair. That's valid. But internal policies is one thing. I mean, isn't this interference and cooperation with the top state sponsor of terrorism dangerous, dare I say, even treasonous? I mean, shouldn't there be a united front against a clear enemy of the United States? And this enemy predates any administration of uh, the last 40 years. I really don't think it's at all clear that that's happening. And 
We don't know uh, from this recent reporting or from the two-year-old story uh, from Politico that you cited that anything like this is going on. Um, contacts before, between members of former administrations and leaders from around the country are so routine they happen daily. You, know, you need only think about people like Henry Kissinger or former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, the list goes on and on. They're constantly talking with leaders of other countries. Where the demarcation line needs to be is if they claim to be negotiating on behalf of their government as opposed to just offering their opinions. So you're okay with giving, you're okay with them being that's, uh, given advice? Spencer, that's incorrect according to the Logan Act. That's not what the Logan Act says. If a, an American citizen goes and discusses foreign policy, even if he does not represent himself as a member of the administration, but urges that country to effectuate policy, which is counterintuitive to the policy of the White House, then he is in violation of the Logan Act. Just because it has not been prosecuted in 150 years does not mean that these individuals are against the spirit or the letter of the law. Democrats who acknowledge to Aaron Banco in her May 31st Daily Beast article that they are doing this engagement in order to thwart this administration's policy towards Iran are undermining American national security and violating federal law. You acknowledged that what Mike Flynn did was incorrect. What All these right. Democrats are doing is incorrect too. Greg, we're running out of time, Spencer. You got 30 seconds or so. I just want to give you the final word on this. Sure. Again, I really don't think it's at all clear that what was going on in these conversations, and they clearly deny it in the article. I also want to invite people to look up the two-year-old Politico story about the supposed slow walking of action against Hezbollah. There's a reason that story died, and there, there's a reason you can only find it on right-wing websites to this day. Well, that's not the only um, way you find just it. Look they up did the have, response. They look had. up to the look up. Well, all the the response from the uh, mainstream media and people who actually check these things out, and I have experience with this in media. This is why stories die. They don't all check right, out Spencer, the sources. We're out of time. We're seem to have had an axe to grind, Spencer, and there were very Greg, few of them. Thank you.